What's up everybody, it's Mr. Second Passport. Today I'm gonna to cover a topic that's probably gonna make me look pretty bad. Like maybe a miser, cheapskate, any of those words will probably do, a scrooge. But it's a mistake I see a lot of North Americans do when they first arrived to Ecuador um, due to just lack of experience of being here. And it's something I wanted to mention, right? And that is tipping, the topic of tipping and why you should not tip almost never in Ecuador, right? It's not why you think. It's not. Some of us, I know, have money and you want to share it. Be generous. That's fine. But that has nothing to do with this, right? First, you have to understand there's a certain difference in mentality um, between Ecuadorians and Ecuador and the U.S. And Ecuadorians who live in the U.S. for a long time, they change, right? They get more Americanized. So they're different. You can't really compare them. Right? There's so many differences, and you see them all when you're living down here. Like, for instance, Ecuadorians. A lot of Ecuadorians just don't accept dogs into their family like North Americans do. They don't let them sleep in their bed. When they, sw when they move dwellings from one to the other and that dog doesn't fit in the new dwelling or can't go, they'll often just leave the dog in the street, and that's how street dogs and have to fend for itself, and that's how street dogs come about. Not right or wrong, it's just, uh, you know, different. Right, so my point is the mentality changes, and you, and it's for me down here. It's it's the difference between living in the suburbs where I where I grew up in of Cleveland, Ohio, and I also spent some time living in the inner city as an adult. You know, shout out to West Forty Eighth and Clark. Don't go, but if you have to, drive quickly. Uh, it's not a nice area, um, and for me, living in there was kind of like uh, I learned a different mentality of survival you know don't trust so quickly if you are generous don't show it because it's, it's kind of taken as a weakness and then you'll just get hounded by people right and taken advantage of so um you know for me it, in the inner city it was kind of like a survival mentality which i see it's kind of similar in ecuador too right if you if you have money you don't want to show it right because you can you can get some problems and attract the wrong kind of people so for example there's a best case and a worst case scenario to tipping, right? And they're both bad. And they're magnified if you're living in a small town like, say, a Crucita, right, here in Ecuador. Because, you know, you're going to see the same people all the time, right? The same service providers, the same taxi drivers, et cetera, et cetera, whatever, right? The best case scenario, if you're tipping, right, just making it rain, just making it rain, uh, you know, say you got a $3 taxi ride and you give them a 10. Hey, there you go, buddy. You know, you think you're being nice. You think you're being generous. But, right, and in a way you are, but it's kind of looked at differently down here. It's that difference of mentality. Uh, the best case scenario is that, okay, you just inflated the prices for that same service for you, and for everyone who looks like you, North Americans living in that area, you know, the next time you want to take that $3 taxi ride now became maybe a 5 or a $10 ride because you gave them a 10 last time. So then what you're doing is, the best case scenario is you're promoting that double market, you know, which me and I know a lot of people are not in favor of, of, yeah, and I'm going to charge gringos one price and locals the true price. You know, I'm not in favor of that, and that's why I think... You should not tip, especially don't tip taxi drivers. It's just not customary down here. Just don't do it. Just tip what it is. And if you really want to feel generous, don't negotiate. Ask what it, the price is for a ride before you get in and, and pay whatever they say. Right? That's one way to be generous without tipping. I, I don't, really don't recommend tipping. Right? That's best case scenario. Inflating prices for you and everyone nearby. Worst case scenario. Worst case might seem a little paranoid to some people, but I've seen it happen with my own eyes, and I've only been here seven years, so it's not like a, I've been here an eternity. So it does happen. Not, not, maybe not often, but it can, right? The worst case scenario, and like a, especially in a small town, oh, in, in a place like Ecuador, if you're a big tipper, just making it rain, say you give a taxi driver that 10 bucks, 20 bucks, and say keep it on a three, four dollar cab ride, and they, uh, you know, next, the next day or whatever, you know, they're sitting on the beach with their friend drinking at 10 a.m. on a Monday, which is quite common on the coast of Ecuador. And they say, hey, you see that guy walking over there? 
he just tipped me 20 bucks on a $3 cab ride. You know, and that guy who you tip might have an affinity towards you, fine. You know, hey, you know, but that guy sitting next to him doesn't. And then what you've done is you've kind of made yourself kind of a target. And what you're going to do is he's going to, he's going to, he might watch you and see where you live. And then he's going to start watching and just see your routine. Oh, that guy leaves to walk on the beach for a few hours every morning. Bam, you know, let's hit it. Let's hit that house or whatever. So I'm just saying what you, worst case scenario is you kind of make yourself a target, right? If you, if you're kind of a big tipper down here, because people associate that with being loaded. They don't really associate it with being generous. They associate it with being loaded. So you want to, uh, not show that you're loaded in a in a place like Ecuador, just like the inner city. You, I, in my opinion, you just want to keep a low profile, fly under the radar, and and that way you can just have uh, less problems in general. So for me, this is the best and worst case scenarios of uh, showing you why you should probably not tip in a place like Ecuador. It's really a thing that it's not worldwide. It's a very North American thing tipping. So. Like down here in a lot of nicer restaurants, you can usually just tip change or a few bucks. And often that money, if you leave it on the table, won't even go to the person you want it to who waited on you. It'll go straight to the pockets of the people who clean the table, whoever that might be. And there, you might see it right on the check as a service fee in a lot of nice restaurants. Well, I got news for you, and I hate to say it, um, but I've checked up a lot of places down here. That service fee doesn't even make it back to the employees. A large part of it, or sometimes all of it, goes straight to the restaurant owner. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, it sucks, but that's how it is. So, that's the whole tipping situation down here in Ecuador. In a nicer restaurant, you might tip a few bucks or, you know, some change. Uh, but if you can, give it directly to the person who waited on you, who you want it to have it. Uh, and, you know, taxis and all these kind of things and even tour guides and stuff. Really, you don't have to tip down here, uh, and I suggest you don't. Um, the only exception I can think of is, you know, giving a few coins uh, to the guys who bag your groceries and help you take them out to your car here in Ecuador. You should definitely tip those guys. Um, but a couple coins is fine, one dollar, two dollars. They're they're very happy with it. So anyway, I'm Mr. Second Passport. If you like this, don't forget to subscribe below and hit the like button. Helps the channel expand. Take care.